So this is Brad from Yard Metal, and I'm talking with Steve Whiteman from Kicks. Awesome, thank you for chatting with me. Pleasure. Um, so, so yeah, I was talking to you. I saw you guys at M3 uh, about a month ago in right? Maryland. Yeah, in Maryland, yeah. you guys. That's an annual thing for you guys. Yeah, that, that's our hometown crowd. So yeah, normally we headline that on a Friday night, but Tom requested it, and we're like, we don't care. You know, we don't, <laughs> go ahead and close. We don't care. So you know that, that's a big deal to our hometown crowd. That you know the hometown hometown boys are headlining M3 and get in front of about ten thousand people. It's kind of cool. It, it was a it's good. It was cool. a good crowd. Yeah, it's a great crowd. Yeah, and I mean for well, it's a great event. I mean, it, it really uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things about the music that that I like. Yeah, and that is uh, you know the the people who were there. It was mostly. Um, about nostalgia, right? Okay, right. Uh, which is cool. That's 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 there's really cool. There's a lot cool. of that going on. There's a lot of these festivals, the Monsters of Rock crews. There's, it's yeah. like a whole resurgence of this music, and those who survived and you know didn't die or didn't, didn't get fat and ugly and lose their voice, you know, we're all back and everybody's thriving and everybody's loving it again. And, and that was a really hot day. The second day it was freezing ass, yeah. which I don't, th I don't think you were there. No, we weren't you, there. you missed that. So yeah, so it was really hot and humid. Um, how does that affect your voice? I, I sing great when it's hot and humid. Okay. The I've humidity heard, is great for, for a singer. I, I've heard uh, singers say that, although there was one singer who was a really great singer played that day, I won't say who it was, that was struggling. Really? Yeah, and, and I had seen him like a month or so in here and spot on so so let's reverse that now okay. it's super ass dry here yeah it's high altitude well, i just hydrate i just yeah. super hydrate i seen, but i've seen guys come in here and really you know have a tough time yeah they, i'll be fine they, i have no doubt i have no doubt <laughs> i know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that a lot too i i, yeah. I, I teach vocals so yeah i I, 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 I know i know the ins and the outs of my voice and what i have to do to prepare and you know, I've, I've been doing this for so long, it's it's second nature to me now. Yeah, well, you anyway, you proved it to me well, at, at M3. You sounded just fantastic. Fact, the whole band sounded fantastic. Everybody's, everybody's kept together really well. Everybody has worked hard at um, staying in shape and, and keeping their looks and keeping their wits about them. And the, the way that we started this band with, with the integrity and just the ambition and the drive and the focus, it's never left. So even when we had like an eight-year hiatus and we came back, we just sort of picked it right up where it left off. And everybody digs in before every show. We take every show very serious. Everybody prepares and we hit the stage and we're a machine. That's awesome. Now, one thing you did at M3 was you played the entire Blow My Fuse. Yep. We're gonna do it again tonight. Okay, that's what that was my question. Is yeah. that like something you're gonna be it's doing? It's something we're gonna be doing throughout the whole shows? year because okay. it is the 30th anniversary of that record yeah. coming out, and it was obviously the biggest album of our career. So we think it's pretty appropriate to talk about the album, and we're actually going to re-release it. We're going to call it um, Reblown, Blow My Fuse, Reblown. It's going to come out on the same date that the original album came out, September 23rd, I believe. Okay. And it's going. To, it's also going to have it's totally remixed by Bo Hill. Who, who produced the Midnight Dynamite album for us. And um, we're actually going to, we have the original demos that we made before we made the album. So people can hear the demos, what the demos sounded like, and how it turned into the album. So it's kind of cool. Okay. So I have, I, at this point in the history of the world, I have now purchased this album three times. I bought it well, as a vinyl. Get four. <laughs> yeah. I bought it as a vinyl. I bought it when it first came out on CD. And then I bought the Rock Candy remaster. Which is actually really good. I don't even know what that is. You don't know what those guys? I don't know what that is, no. See, that's what sucks. I mean, those guys do an awesome job, but I don't know whoever owned Well, we, you we, guys should be I've getting... I've never heard tell of it. Yeah. All right. Well, I should have brought it with me. But anyway. Um, I'm used to getting fucked. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right, though. No, it's that's not, right. not what this but, is. A, but yeah. you do get used to it. Yeah. It, it's not unusual, you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, part of, part of our our mission at Yard Metal is uh, we're trying to promote bands that we like, mm -hmm. rock bands. I mean, we're called Yard Metal, but I mean rock, okay? Okay. Anything that rocks, we're we're in on. Uh, but a lot of great bands like yourselves are making still really good music, and mm -hmm. so we're we're trying to put an outlet for that. Nice. So. Um, so you're the one. Uh, yeah, I'm. I we are the one. 
Um, and I, again, I, I real, like I said at M3, I realize the nostalgia aspect of that and that these people are here. They want to hear the old songs. Sure they do. Um, but we still throw a couple new ones at them. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about, about this in a moment. Okay. I've got the uh, Can't Stop the uh, Show DVD CD, which is awesome, by the way. If you don't have it, you should get it. Even if you just get it for the CD, the, the, the live uh, yeah. the show on there is fantastic. Um, but so okay, so you're gonna do all of blow my fuse tonight. Mm-hmm. You're doing it all the rest of the rest of the year. Yeah, I'm assuming for yep. the dates of the yeah. rest of the year, which is cool. I am yes, I will buy my fourth version it's, of blow my we've, fuse. We've heard some of, of the first um, mixes that Bo's done, and man, because of the technology yeah. that's come since 30 years ago, it sounds amazing. It's a it it any in, in from the get go it's a great sound. Yeah, it it's is, a great sounding there album. There were things that we we didn't like about it. There was a lot of it got kind of murky and muddied up by too much echo here and there and too much yeah, reverb. But that's the eighties. That was so. the eighties exactly. Yeah. But it, and now you can clean it up and you make it sound pristine. It still sounds really good. And, oh and, yeah. And you know, as I listen to your music, I, 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 especially that album, I'm like, why do I like this so much? Because yeah. it's fun. It's okay. It's fun, number one, but it's also something that I think is missing in a lot of music that's coming out now, and that is, it's it's got swagger, it's yeah. got a beat, it makes you makes you nod your head, and I got to give your drummer some props for that. Go ahead. Yeah, Jim. I think it's Jimmy. Okay, because his playing. I mean, I'm hoping he played on the album. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Some, such, yeah, yeah. cuz uh, that's what really brings it. I mean, the songs are great and of course, you know, everybody's performances are great, but I think it's the drums that really drive that stuff. Oh, now, tell him you said that. He'll he'll love that. Yeah, I understand you're a drummer. I started playing drums, yeah. When these guys um they, they, they recruited me, I was a, a drummer and doing lead vocals from behind the drums. And they were looking for a lead singer. Yeah. And I and I said, I don't know if I just want to abandon my drums and I've been playing them all my life. So I joined the band as a drummer and singer. But there was, an, there was another drummer singer, so we would switch off. And it was great training for me because I was totally fine back behind my drums singing, but leave, leave my drums and just stand in front of a microphone stand. I'm like, holy shit, this is hard. So it was, it was great training, and then eventually we had to uh, let him go, and we got Jimmy in the band, and the rest, well, the rest good, is his. Good, good choice on getting yes. Jimmy in the band. Um, well, s- since you were a drummer, I like to think that you know you don't ever stop playing. Oh, I an still instrument. play. Okay, good. When was the last time you played the drums? I uh, whenever I write songs, I, okay. I have a studio in my house, yeah. and I I usually play all the guitars and the bass and the drums and all the vocals and make my demos. And when it comes time to when you want to make another record, I throw my shit into the pile, and if they like it, we use it. If they don't, I'll put it out another time. There you go. All right, cool. So you're still playing. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, um, so so yeah, so we're gonna hear that album tonight. Now there are some songs on that album that you said you'd never played live before. Piece of the pie. We've never ever played that song live. That's the only one. Yeah, Boomerang the other ones we play, but not for very long. Okay, because they're hard. <laughs> I was gonna say those are crazy ass high hard. songs. Not for me. It's for the really? guitar players. Yeah, it's hard for the no. yeah. Dirty Boys is a hard song to play. Okay. And I mean, they are high, but yeah. I, you know, like I say, I, I can I don't know. I, is I that, hold on to my voice. As I, as I watched you guys do it, that's what I kept thinking. I was thinking, holy crap, man, you know, that's some high vocals. Yeah, it is. But, okay, all right, well, we'll. That, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's fantastic, man. Um, so, yeah, so, so we're going to get to hear this again tonight. I'm excited. Cool. Will the set be kind of similar, a little bit longer, or about you know what? Same? We've got we, we we got to cut it down to a seventy-five again tonight. Because okay. We got to get out of here tomorrow. At we got to leave here at seven in the morning Ooh. to get on an eight thirty flight to go to Denver to play at three in the afternoon at a festival. Okay. So we, I I said we got to cut the, cut it down just for for the vocal sake. And normally I never do that, but in this situation I got to. Fair enough. Okay. So about four years ago, you came out with some new music. Yep. Which was kind of a radical thing for the band, considering that the main songwriter was no longer right. In the, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. But um, I, I, I sound like I'm kissing your ass or something. I'll go ahead. That okay? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a visual here. No. Um, 
I think it's a fantastic album. We were really pleased with it. it, it the whole thing started. We were on Frontiers Records, and we we gave them this live video that, that these two guys shot in Baltimore. They just came to it. Can we shoot a show? And they shot a couple of shows, and they start sending us footage of this video that they shot. And it was so damn good. We thought, man, we got to get this out to people. So we we hooked up with Frontiers Records, and Frontier said, we'll put this out if you give us a, a, a new studio album. And that's what got got it, oh, the okay. whole thing churning because we like, what's the point these days? You know, all the fans want to hear the old stuff anyway. So uh, it took time, and then little by little, um, Brian contacted. Uh, Taylor Taylor Rhodes, yeah, who who was with Donnie during the the writing days and co-produced a couple of Kicks albums. When he said he would get involved, we start sending him demos of music that we had written, you know, just had laying around, and then he got excited about it. So he came up to Maryland and we did a pre-production with him, and that really got the ball rolling. Then all the music just started flowing, and yeah, it turned out really really good. It it yeah it it. It's fantastic. Which, by the way, if you buy the DVD, you actually get to see Taylor, and and you got to marvel at his hair. It's I, it is a marvel. <laughs> Does he roll it? out of bed looking like that? Yes. I mean, that's yeah. it's it's it's, spect- it's spectacular. I <laughs> I uh, I admire that about him. Uh, but anyway, I I, 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 I got to get to loud and proud when uh, when it came time to put the record out. We weren't real happy oh, yeah, with the way things were going. This is no, this on loud and proud records. And yeah. when we were able to deal with Tom Lipsky, who was also he, he took kicks on, on his previous label, CMC. I think it was CMC. One of them. That was the one that did the, show the last yeah, show yeah. business. Yeah. So get the opportunity to work with Tom again, we, we wanted to hop on that idea. So we got out of the Frontiers deal, and we made the record for CMC, or uh, for Loud and Proud. Yeah, Loud, and they got to give some love to Loud and Proud because they're, they're putting out they good stuff here. They were great. They were really, really mm-hmm. good in, in helping us and, and getting it out and getting the word out. These days it's hard to do. Oh, I mean, it's important. Yeah. Again, that's part and of our nobody mission. Nobody plays new music. Yeah. The, the only way people hear about it is on the internet, yeah. and live shows. Well, we're 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 doing our best, and of course, this will hopefully help too. Um, well, let's talk about this the the, the live part of the of, okay. of this DVD. Um, the thing I really like about it is you feature a lot of songs off the new album, right? Which I know you can't really do that in a set now because again people are there yeah people want to hear the old stuff yeah they want to hear the old stuff um you let off with wheels in motion I believe it yeah three did we I maybe I was I think I thought thought we let off with uh, can't stop the show which is what we're leading off with tonight I think it was I mean I'm wrong I'm old but anyway I'll tell you what it's a great opening song I loved it I I think I I for sure was because I was like holy crap listen how do you sing that that uh the chorus of that it's hard and, yeah I mean there's a there's, yeah there's no breathing in there yeah it's a it's it's kick-ass so if you're listening to this and you haven't heard this song well wheels in motion we actually yeah. made a video for that when you can go on YouTube and just, okay. just dial up kicks and wheels in motions on there and it's uh we shot that in Baltimore in front of our hometown crowd so it's pretty Pretty yeah, good good people there in Baltimore Absolutely. I, I have to I have to agree with that that was a, again m3 I gotta give some love to them because uh, the the people there were just fantastic. The yeah, crowd, uh, loving everything, having a having a great time. Uh, the one there's one song on here though that I seriously just can't get out of my head. All right, you're gone. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a great song. Yeah, it's got a great groove. It does. Just that's the groove. again. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. It's yeah, like, that's this, one of my favorites too. Yeah, this is what music. This is this is what you know speaks to my heart. That was probably the the second song we picked off of this, and I, that might have been the single. No, Top Down was the single. Yeah, Top Love Down was the single, down. which but, is a good a good song. Yeah, but, but it doesn't stick with me the way you're you're. Yeah, that is. one that one just got a groove to it. That yeah, it, it's an infectious yeah. groove. Everybody likes that one. So, but you're probably not playing that tonight. Not tonight, unfortunately. <sighs> so where do I have to go to see you guys play that? So I can make arrangements. You know what? Since we've been doing this whole "Blow My Fuse" album, because that takes yeah, up ten eats songs. Up everything. Yeah, yeah, that takes up a whole like three quarters yeah, of the set. So we got to wait for another tour. Yeah, unfortunately, right. but we have been playing that up until we we started doing the "Blow My Fuse" album. Okay. Um, tell me really quick about the these last two songs on here. This live at uh, Sirius XM stuff that you put on here. We did. Um, they invited bands in, and they invited us to come in and do like a live show in front of an audience, and. Um, um, those are just some of the tracks that we picked that we, if we were going to put out another live album we didn't want to put out the same 
songs that we put out previously on a live album. So we chose a couple of those and yeah. totally remixed them because they were mixed like poop. <laughs> <laughs> they sound great on the on the CD. Brad so. Divins mixed this. Brad yeah. Divins, who who uh, he runs, he engineers for Iglesias. What, what's the boy? Not Julio, but oh 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 oh. Enri I want to see Enrique. Enrique. Is that Enrique? Enrique Iglesias, yeah. Oh, wow. So he, he's his, his sound engineer, and Brad actually has history with Kicks. He was he played on the second album with Kicks on uh, on Body, not Body Talk, but uh, the hell's the name of the record? Cool Kids. Okay. So All Brad right. was our guitar player on that record, so we have a history with him, and, and he, he did a great job on it. Yeah, he did. Um, and you can tell Brian that, I mean, you can tell he's playing a, a telecast. Oh, yeah. That. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's it, it's beautiful, and it doesn't sound like there was a lot of people there, but they were pretty enthusiastic. I think it's just where the the, the microphones were placed. It yeah. wasn't, you know, okay. the audience wasn't really a big part of it. They were well after. Well, okay, love pollution. I, the thing I like about that is at the end you say, "How long has it been since we played that?" And somebody goes, oh, ten hours." <laughs> and you said, "No, I mean like." <laughs> I love that you left that in there. That, that's real. Um, when was the last time you played that before Oof, then? Not a long time. Like. 30 yeah no not plus. that long no. but that was a long time a long time yeah sounds great so a great song too and then but but after that but after midnight dynamite the place blows up so i don't know whether that was the <laughs> really sweetening or there was no pun intended there by the way uh, all right so cool so we are a worldwide uh radio station okay. I, I notice all your dates for the rest of the year are in the u.s right I'm sure that's a logistical thing or whatever. I know yeah, last year... Yeah, we never year, did too much in Europe. I mean, we tried. We did Sweden Rock last year, and oh, we okay. did, um, did an England another one festival. in England. Yeah, yeah. A, a, another festival. But, man, the travel to do one show, to go all the way to Sweden, it killed me. I'm yeah. like, ah, it ain't worth that. Give us four or five shows. To, you know, take me over there for a reason. But to do one show and come turn around and come home, I'm like, nah, I'm too old for that. Okay. And the, the interest was mid-level you know it wasn't like they were you know jumping up and down to see us because we never did much in europe i yeah. mean that's the honest truth but atlantic records didn't didn't push us over there we tried we did we, we did a uk tour and we played little tiny dinky clubs and that was like i don't want to do that again but japan kind of went went ape over us, so i'd like to get back there and do that again well they should when was the last time you played in japan probably to blow my fuse no we went over there for um for show business Oh. So probably ninety four, something like okay. that. Right. And it still was good. Yeah, it was yeah. good. I mean, we started off in nice big theaters for Blow My Fuse and Hot Wire. It was big clubs, and then show business. It was little clubs. So yeah, that's when we saw the demise of the of just the whole the whole genre of music was just dying. Yeah, that's tough times. But you know, yeah, we keep hearing the rock is dead thing. Nah, and I yeah, I don't believe that for, nah. at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. But, um, uh, yeah, and you look at the, the people who are going to these big festivals and that. And, there's a know, lot of them, too. And they're, they're, yeah, they're doing, they're doing some good business. Yeah, uh, but it's much more tough, much tougher for a band like you guys to go out yeah. as, on your yeah, own. Yeah, because we, we didn't have any big hit songs. I mean, we had Don't Close Your Eyes. We had Cold Blood and Blow My Fuse, kind of mid mid hits in the 30s and 40s yeah. on the charts but we didn't we didn't have a lot of hit songs so we our get over is our live show yeah. if people give the band a chance I think they're entertaining uh, and I'll, I'll second that if you go see Kicks and you don't like it something's wrong with you I agree <laughs> I'm serious <laughs> you're fucking I'm, ahead <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm serious man I, I, as I was sitting there and, and I thought after you guys played it, it was it was a lot I've heard that me. a lot. Yeah. 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 I was like, um, I, it ain't getting any better than that. Okay. Um, so you guys set, you guys set the bar high and, uh, so. That's good. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I forgot what I was, what I was going to ask you about, about next about that, but I won't. Oh, well you said don't close my eyes. Uh huh. Now I noticed uh, Bob Halligan Jr. was kind of. Co-writer on that. Yeah, yeah. So he normally like just kicks out stuff. Did, how did that song head your way? Because I can't... That was a Donnie... Uh, was Donnie started and then got those guys involved? Him so. and what's yeah. the other guy? The, John um, Palumbo. Yeah, John yeah, Palumbo. That was all just a collaboration That's, of those three really good writers. Okay. That, yeah, great song. Yeah, because those guys... Well, Palumbo, I guess, did a few other songs with you yeah. guys, too, yeah. so it was him and, him and Donnie. Well, the writing team now is strong. The new music is strong. Thank you. 
Sounds great. Yeah, um, that was like a, that was like a liberation doing that record because we were always under under Donnie's wings and yeah. you know, we were always under his shadow and had to listen to everything that he wanted. It was my, his way or the highway. So being able to pull this off without him was very liberating. When was the last time you talked to him? The last show we did in really? 1995. Yeah. That kind of sucks. So it, it really, it's it's the way it has to be. Yeah. And, that's, All right. and that's, the yeah. way that, that's the way he prefers it. So yeah. that's the way it is. Good enough. Well, well, let's give your new bass player some love real quick before Mark's we close up. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody in this band gets along. We're really good friends. We love what we're doing. It shows on stage. Having Mark in this, it, this was Mark's idea, this whole 30th anniversary thing, knowing that he could get his hands on the master and said, man, we should really make a big deal out of this. And none of us would have thought of that. We just thought, ah, it's another record. But mm. Mark, Mark has got this whole campaign going, got the record company all lit up about it. And so he's um, he's an innovative kind of guy. He's been he's been great for this band and for all of us. And I can say one other thing about him. Not only is he a really good bass player, but his tone is unbelievable. Oh, he knows it. Yeah. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because in most shows you go to, you don't even hear the bass. I know. And it's like him. It's like, no, yeah. He's, he's got and it's, of crumb shit. And yeah. He knows how to use it. Yeah. He, uh, he, he sounds great. He plays great. Which, that, that was the question I was going to ask you about the first song in here, Wheels in Motion. There's uh -huh. a little bass solo in there. No. No? no. Yeah, there is. Wheels in Motion? Yeah, yeah there is in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, he, he kind of wrote that song. Was that yeah. his idea, or did somebody else push him into that? I guess you'd have to ask him. I don't know. Oh. I thought the arrangement, the arrangement was already there when I, when I, when I okay. first heard it. Yeah. I thought, well, that's pretty ballsy for the new guy mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm going to put a little bass solo in it's here. It's just a little exit ramp to bring the song back. But it's great. It's perfect. Yeah. It's, it fits yeah. well. It's not like a you know, show-off well, thing. Well, that's what all the pre-production stuff did. We went through all those songs and tore them apart and, and put them back together again. So yeah. anything that, everything that we liked made it to the record. Things that we didn't like, buy a speech. Yeah. Well, the whole album's great. Thank you. So uh, we'll wrap this up because I know you got a big show to do tonight. Thank you so much again for talking to me. Again, this is Brad at uh, Yard Metal. Um, President Brad, as they like to call me. And uh, this is... a pleasure. Steve Whiteman from Kicks. Okay. It's been a pleasure, Brad. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yep, you're welcome.